Hey guys, it's Angie. Um, back with a video per request. Um, I was working on some boxes for the upcoming show, um, which is this Saturday. This will not post until next week, though. So, the show will be over by then. Um, but these are the little boxes I'm going to be putting candy in. I'm not sure which candy is going to go in them right now, but I was watching the paper pixie Julie Damadio um, and she did this and I'm like that is just too cute and it's one of those ones that's gonna be like you know somebody's gonna have to pick it up and look at it and say how in the world and they are a little fiddly just a little bit but if I can figure them out you can figure them out so I um, she called this a geode um, cube box so I thought, well, if it's gonna, if we're gonna, she's gonna call it a geode box, I'm gonna make this piece stand out because to me that's like the star tr attraction to this box is this popped out piece. So I wanted to accentu accentuate that um, and I've added glitter paper to it. I've also papered um, all the sides because you know at least the people that, that we're used to dealing with. They got to pick things up and inspect them and everything else. So I wanted it to look decent from all sides. So I have my heap here in front of me and I will show you the different ones I did and then um, I will gladly show you how um, we put this together and I did use her measurements um, and I'll be sure to link it down below and give her complete credit for it. All I did was tweak a couple of things and add the the um, papers here in the middle as well so that one's black and yellow as you can see this one's the black and pink pinkish purple and some of them I forgot to put thumb holes in so I have to keep going back and checking for those this one here I went and went for that contrast again like I did with the yellow one with the white glitter paper the only thing I'm disappointed with with this one, I didn't color the edges of my paper and I don't like that white seam sticking out. That's just me and my OCD-ness. This one I kept a little more subdued, which I really like this one. I think this is one of my favorites. I also kept with the same paper pad for these so when they're stacked together on the table it doesn't look like a jumbled mess. It kind of looks cohesive. Now this one I didn't use um, glitter paper for but I used mirror cardstock yeah I'm, I broke out the good stuff the glitter and the mirror and all that stuff I hoard <laughs> this one's all the pinks the pink glitter I was like once you start making them it's like oh I could do this combination I could do that combination this one's a little more subdued again the white glitter orange and gold and the purple and orange which I really like to like pulling the purple out of this paper and it is a craftsmith oh my gosh who knows how long we've had this thing um, came from Michaels um, was $20 ain't no way I pay $20 for a pad of paper that's just nuts so obviously it was on clearance so who knows how long this has been in our stash but it was calling my name for this project so there's the purple one okay so let's show you how this goes pull that up a little bit okay we're going to need a six and a half by eight and a half inch sheet of paper. This is just regular old 65 pound box store cardstock. I was afraid it was going to be too wimpy for this project, but till you add the the heavier cardstock paper onto it, and being that it's smaller, it's actually pretty rigid. scoreboard here now this is very simple scoring I don't know if you can 
trying to figure out how to do this and not make a mess. Okay, very simple scoring. If I could get the darn score tool out. Okay, eight and a half inches on our long side, six and a half inches on our short side. We're going to score at every two inches on each side. So two inches. Four inches. Sorry about that. I have no idea who that was. Two inches, four inches, six inches. And eight inches. going to turn. Sorry I'm slow at scoring this tonight. My hands are pretty shot after making all those. But it's so worth it. Okay, so now we're at two, four, and six. Okay, that's it for scoring. Pretty simple numbers. Just score every two inches. One even I can remember the numbers for. Okay, let's back up here. Nope. All right, now. If you have trouble um, making your diamond pattern here the way I'm going to, um, please click the link down below for Julie's video. She uses dies and traces them. I tried that with the first one and I didn't have any luck with it. Um, my edges didn't, my corners didn't come out nice and crisp like I would have liked them and I had to fiddle a little bit more than I should have. So um, I'm going to show you how I did it and what worked for me. Let's grab a stylus, not two. <clears throat> All right. So as your face, as your paper is facing you, you want your half-inch score lines to the top and to the right of your for the orientation. Half-inch score line top, half-inch score line right. These four lower squares are what we're going to work in. These cubes. Now I have this We Are Memory Keepers magnetic board ruler. Um, I don't use it very often, but when I do it, the little bugger comes in handy. I also have my piece of crappy craft foam that I use to stamp on and um, roll my flowers out on and whatnot. But I'm going to use it for this so I have a little bit of cushion for my stylus to go into. I've got a six inch roller. It does not matter what size roller you have, as long as you make your dots an inch and an inch and a half apart. For me, I'm going to, let's see if I can get you a little closer, I'm going to drop my three inch mark right at that intersection of these four lines on the, these four cubes. That's where I'm putting my three inch. So I know I'm going to come up an inch which is going to give me two inches and put a dot and I'm going to come up to two and a half inches and put a dot. So come up an inch, put a dot, come up an inch and a half and put a dot. When I do the bottom, an inch down would be at four inches, an inch and a half down is at four and a half inches. Now I already have those all marked out for me. This was just the fastest way I found for me to do um, without trying to find square dies that lined up everything and I mean the way she did it was really slick but it just didn't work for me. Okay I have my three inch mark here on that intersection again. I'm going to come out at an inch which makes that three to four inches and an inch and a half would be four and a half inches and put that dot. Going backwards an inch is going to give me two inches 
an inch and a half, I'm gonna put one and a half, okay? So each one of these dots, the, the inside dots are going to be an inch from that center point. The outside dots are going to be an inch and a half from that center point. Now all we have to do is line up our roller from short point to short point. Yes, I made that mistake and had a couple that were totally off and like, well, I've done screwed that up to where it just has to be thrown out. Now you can do all short lines at once. What I was doing was doing my short line then jumping up while I'm already at that angle and putting in my longer line. And I'm just going from dot to dot. That the camera's picking that up. I'm just, I have my dots here and I'm just scoring from dot to dot. And we're gonna do that the whole way around. So I'm gonna put my stylus right at that dot where I left off, pivot my ruler down to my next inside dot, and score that. Now you want a good crisp score line here. Um, it will help, but you don't wanna put holes don't ask me how I know that one either. Yeah, I, I the first one popped together so quickly. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got this. Yeah, and then I don't know how many later is like, it finally clicked. I'm like, all right, now that I've got like 13 of these under my belt, now I feel comfortable doing a video since Miss Irene asked for one. And I'll gladly do what I can and show you what I know when I can. Okay, so there's our short line to short line again. Now I'm gonna go from long line to long line. Spin up around here and do my last one. So short to short and long to long or outside to outside. However you can keep it straight. So there's what you should be left with at this point. A diamond down here in this corner. And we are done with all that. <clears throat> now, we are going to cut. The scariest part for me <laughs> was cutting into this, this diamond. Um, like, oh my gosh, I went through all that. But we're going to cut straight up this first line. And you're gonna go right to that intersection from which we were measuring from. Okay. Now, I'm going to fold this out of the way because we're gonna take about three quarters of this section off. If you feel more comfortable putting it back in your scoreboard to do that, you go right ahead. Can we see what we're doing now? Yeah, now we can see what we're doing. So for me, I just watch the end of my scissors. As long as I see the end of my scissors are going straight, I know I'm gonna cut a straight line or relatively close to it. So one, Now, I did not throw these pieces away. This piece and one other piece is the only waste that you're gonna have. I'm going to be using ours for um, the tags and little decorations that are going to go on these. Okay, now back to our bottom here. This first little tab that has the two short lines, you're just gonna give that a tiny little notch, like so. Now these next two score lines are gonna get a, you are you want to miter that corner. Um, don't panic, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, just come in pretty deep um, to your corner there and let me see if I can, that's not a very good example but down in here right now what we're doing is making this inside corner right here and see how that overlaps real good that's what we're working on
and it does help to take that extra bulk out. I played around a few different ways to see what um, what might work or what happens if you get yourself in this predicament or that predicament. And I was like, I'm making enough of them, and I'm was getting more comfortable with them, so I started throwing myself little curve balls um, just in case something would arise. Okay, now our end tab. We have our score line here. We're going to notch this tab in a little bit. And then we're going to turn our paper. And we're going to notch this tab in a little bit. This piece right here is going to be our um, where we're going to put our adhesive to close the box. So we can notch that just a little bit. And we're going to take this block here completely out these four squares. Well, one square, three rectangles. We're going to take that completely out. And again, that's a piece that I'm going to hang on to because I'm going to make my coordinating tag out of it to match this box when I'm done. I do it when I'm doing uh, multiples of something. I do everything st in stages. I'll cut all the paper. I'll score all the paper. I'll go back through and do all my cuts and burnishing, <clears throat> which I didn't do ahead of time. Um, for this one, honestly, I think for me personally, it goes to bed, goes quicker and easier. Well, not really quicker, but it goes easier um, to do it afterwards might just be because that's the way I'm used to doing it but okay so we're gonna cut straight up these last two score lines and I'm cutting just this one just to the left and this one just to the right of that score line so the score line remains on these these tabs here oh we have three flaps we're going to fold our middle one back out of the way. We don't want to cut that off. That's going to be our lid. And we're just going to cut some of these down. Again, if you're more comfortable with putting it back in a trimmer, making them all even, you go right ahead. So when I'm doing these in bulk, I just want to get them done. And if somebody wants to pull out a measuring tape and see that they're square, hey, be my guest. All right, so now I'm gonna fold these two short ones out of the way and take care of our lid. <clears throat> it will close better if you round the corners. Tried it without it, wasn't fun. It worked, but it wasn't fun. Okay, so now, go through and kind of give everything a little fold. All right, now on to our diamond. I did this a couple of different ways. Oh, crud. Pardon me. We have a couple more cuts. Nothing major. I um, just want to go in and notch these tabs out a little bit so it closes nicer get that bulk out of the way of the seams the score lines <clears throat> okay now one way that I found to work with these this outside is going to pop you want it to pop up the inside score line is going to go down in what I found for me was to um, bend this outside triangle up this way. So I'm creating a mountain fold. And these little tabs here, it gets a little dicey. It's, it's fiddly. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is fiddly. But once it goes together, it just pops right into place. And the more you coerce it, 
the better it will be. Um, I use using my fingernails to kind of help push that paper where I want it to go. So you can see it's starting to form right there. As we pull, I'm pulling this top piece forward as I'm pushing that back on that score line with my fingernail. And one other thing that I found with doing this numerous times, if I flip my whole box upside down and I take these, the inside score lines, the little short ones, and make valley folds of them too, or not valley, mountain folds on the inside. And if you forget to do this part and glue it together, it will still pop out. It is a little more fiddly, but it can be done. My last one, I last two actually I put together, I purposely glued them together without um, completely getting the uh, diamond put together first, just to see if it could be done. And it can be done, it just, it's just fiddly. Okay, so there you can see it's starting to come together. And once I get to that point, that's when I'm gonna put my adhesive on here. So because this is a box, we can just flip flop these over on each other and square it up. This is also another project where you want to make sure everything is as square as possible. I would not recommend tape with this, at least not until you're real comfortable with it because you, <laughs> you need wiggle room. This, this is one of those projects where you need wiggle room and a few minutes to at least a few seconds anyway to manipulate that paper. Okay, I want to make sure that's good and sealed there. Okay. So there's the gist of our box. Now, you can start it. It might be easier for you to go ahead and close the top of your box and then start manipulating this um, back into that diamond shape. Sometimes for me it worked um, by putting it in, sometimes I had to take it back out. It just, some, it, I don't know, it almost felt like the paper sometimes. It's like some paper would work good and others it just wanted to fight me. Okay, one other little tidbit of information keep these pieces folded down in. That's those deep miters that we made. Um, you want to keep them inside now because it's a pain in the butt to try to get them back in later. This weird goofy angle right here, this is where we're going to start gluing and that's going to be the fiddly part because we need to take this piece here and overlap it onto this. Okay. So this is going to go down this is coming up and out. We want to keep that point right there. So while it's like that, we're going to fold this angle down. And like I said, it's it's fiddly, but once it goes, it's like just like that. See, once it goes, it goes. And you can work out all those creases and crevices and everything. So, we're going to put glue on this goofy shape section right here. Kind of like a triangle and this lip right here. And I try to bring my glue out pretty far so that that can line up really good and tight. So we're going to smush that down in there and keep those score lines lined up. Just kind of give it a second to grab. And I just keep manipulating it and turning it and 
if you don't if you try this and you don't get it the first time don't give up it, it is so worth it in the end when you finally get it and it pops into place and you see that it is just the coolest flipping thing <clears throat> okay now we're gonna finish gluing right here so I didn't get that completely cut out so I'm gonna put glue there glue on my edges here And we're going to square that up. <clears throat> it might take a second. Let's keep manipulating it here. And All right. well, I got a little more of a point on that one than I would like, but. I guess they can't all come out perfect. Be nice. But it's handmade and... Alright, now one other little thing that I was learning as I went through this. One, I think I'm just going to try to nip that corner off because that's going to bug me. Um, where's my... To take my bone folder and go in... hit those crease lines sharpen them up a little bit all right now the fun part <clears throat> which I already have pieces cut you are going to need six pieces at one and seven eighths inches now me I, I cannot cut that small um, I can't see it on the trimmer. Cataracts are getting worse. So what I do, I put my paper up and I go just a little bit past. The, I hit between the three quarter and the two inch mark. The one and three quarter and the two inch mark and I know that's close enough. Okay, then the glitter paper is just going to be a three quarter inch square. And we're going to need three pieces of that. So I'm going to have to cut this twice. Three quarters. And another three quarters. Alright, now. What I do is to turn my square into a, a diamond. And I'm lining each of those points up with my the edge of my blade. So when I bring this down gives me my two triangles. I'm going to do that a second time. Okay, so there's those. They are done. Now we have one more um, cut to make. What do I do with my ruler? Okay, we need three full squares. One, two, three. And then we're going to cut these last three, but we're going to do it all at one time. Since these are square, I'm going to flip this over and work on the back side. And I have my, my handy dandy ruler here, and if I get my head in the way, I'm sorry, but it's the only way I can see. Um, I'm going to line my edge up here with the corner, and I'm coming over to 5 sixteenths of an inch. So that's right between, almost between a quarter and a half, but closer to the quarter inch side. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. So we have the top, and I'm going to come down here to the right side and do the same thing again. I'm going to mark that at five sixteenths of an inch. And then I'm going to play connect the dots here and here and make a line I'm not sure what measurements she used um, for that 
um, 5 16 is what I found to work for me um, to fill in those boxes or the triangles so I have all three pieces stacked up here I'm gonna take my big scissors and I'm just gonna cut on that line that I made and that's gonna give us some wonky looking triangles these triangles I'm keeping because I know I have other projects coming up that need triangles and <clears throat> I don't want to throw them away. Now I did go ahead and do the um, marker, the outside edges of these, but I just have the new cut edge, so I'm gonna because I don't like that white core. Okay. All right, let's glue these down. Will these fit in here absolutely perfect? No. Just eyeball it and get it centered up as best you can. It's just one of those fun projects. Like something that I actually had to think about doing, not just cut, fold, burnish, glue, cut, fold, burnish, glue. I think I may try some more of these little 3D projects. I'm hoping they do well on Saturday. I'm hoping people show up on Saturday. This We've never done this show before. Um, and this was a last minute grab. Um, debated on doing it till the last minute, literally. And... She's done a very good job advertising, so we shall see. Okay, then we're gonna fill in our three full squares. And you could adjust these any way you wanted. Um, if you want a bigger border of cardstock showing or smaller. Because um, it's a two inch square, so you can mat this any way you know that you your personal preference. Okay, one last one. And like I said, I'm covering all the sides because I just know somebody's going to pick it up and have to spin it around and look at it. And I'd rather it look presentable from all four sides. Or yeah, more than four sides. Oh my goodness. Okay, now to put our triangles on. The easiest way I found for this for me is to grab my reverse tweezers, kind of pinch the triangle there in the middle. But well, you can do it with your fingers. I did it until I got frustrated with doing it. Then I grabbed these. And I can just slide that into place there. Get it close anyway. Clean up my glue. And there we go. There's one. Grab our next one. It's going to go here. No, stay down. Glue. And then our last one. So I'm sure there's a number of different things that um, can fit in here. I'm thinking I'm going to go with like the lint truffles. Um, I don't have a home for them yet. So I think that's probably what's going to go in here. But there's plenty of room inside there to do 
uh, put what you need. Now the fun part is always me trying to figure out which side opens. And that's where the punch is going to come into play. We're going to give ourselves a little finger notch. This is just a three quarter, no this is a half inch punch. Um, and we will know where to open it at. So there we go guys. I hope um, I explained this well and again I'll link Julie's video down below um, she did a super job of explaining it and she can show you on her video how to do the trace the dies to get that diamond shape but I am loving them I just think they're too cute and fun so okay guys take care and if anybody else has anything that they you know you want me to give a try to please please ask um, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, um, leave a message in YouTube here. We will get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, guys, take care until next time. Bye-bye.